What is up you guys? I am Missy Renee and in today's video we're going to go over the definitive guide to revision and how to revise anything from your past so that you can successfully manifest things in your future. So if manifestation and conscious creation are topics that you are interested in learning more about, then definitely do not forget to subscribe to my channel and be sure to hit that thumbs up button. This will tell the YouTube algorithm to put this video in front of a wider audience so that more people can get this game changing information. And this is a video that has certainly been requested many, many times. I am thrilled to see that revision is beginning to get more and more awareness and more attention on it. Because as I've mentioned before, and as you know, if you've watched my channel, revision is a powerful, powerful tool. I can barely begin to describe how radical the changes can be through revision when it comes to what you desire and and more importantly when it comes to the concept of self it is not an exaggeration to say that revision has completely transformed my life through these acts i've been able to transcend so many barriers so many limiting beliefs so many stories of that fear and doubt and anger all of those things i was finally able to overcome all of those hurdles through the act of this technique. And I give a lot of credit to Revision for the radical transformation that I have had in my life. <laughs> and I get a lot of questions about this topic. So if you are interested in learning more about Revision, if you are interested in getting more information about how to change your life through changing your past, then definitely stick around through the end of the video because I am going to do some deep diving on revision. I'm gonna answer some of the most frequently asked questions that I get and lay it out in a way that is clear and concise so that all of you can take this, apply it, and see the transformation in your lives as well. Before I begin to really dig deep into revision and answer some of those frequently asked questions that I get, I want to talk about first and foremost what revision is. In case you may be brand new to the law, maybe this is the first time you're even hearing about revision and you're interested in learning more about it. Now I will say that I have already made a video talking in depth about revision itself and what it is, so that one will be going much more into detail than this one as far as the introduction goes. So if you have not yet seen that video, if you are new to revision, or if you just need a brush up, maybe it's been a while, <laughs> then I will leave the link to that video up here. And I'll also have that one down in the description box below. But just to summarize quickly, revision is the act of altering the future outcomes through changing the events of the past. Yes, I said changing the past. Believe it or not, the past, just like the future, is very malleable. And that in and of itself is one of the biggest reasons that so many people struggle with this technique. Because we find it very difficult to fathom that we can actually change our past. That we can actually take events that have already happened and change them in a way so that there was a different outcome instead. The way that all of us were taught, <laughs> for the vast majority of people, is that the past is set in stone and that there's no changing it. And this could not be further from the truth. And it is also this presumption, sadly, that keeps us stuck in perpetual habits, that keeps us stuck on our limiting beliefs. Through the past experiences that we've had and the beliefs that we formed around them and on time itself, we keep ourselves in feedback loops that seem almost impossible at times to break. But the truth is, that the past is just as fluid and malleable as the future. And in fact, the past is never actually staying in the past. The past is never actually dead, so to speak. The past is always moving forward in time to confront us in the future. Whatever the past events, and specifically the beliefs and assumptions that we formed through these past events, are what keeps happening to us in the future. So essentially, the reason that we get stuck in these loops 
is because of our perception of time and because of how it helps us to form the assumptions and beliefs that we carry. So that is the first and most important thing that I can stress and that I can get across to all of you. The past is never a done deal. In fact, there is no such thing as the past or the future in that respect. Both of these things, past and future, are imaginary constructs. They're not real. They are, just like everything else, a figment of our imagination. I mean, if you think about it, you can never actually experience the past the same way that you're experiencing this moment right now. You're never able to just go hang out in the future. Even if you were to travel through this so-called time, you're still always going to be present because right now is the only moment that actually exists. And I know that that is a lot to wrap your head around. It took me years to really understand and grasp this concept, but it's important to note for the sake of getting over our own limiting beliefs around revision, that the past is never set in stone and that no matter what happened, whatever events transpire, they can be changed. And when we change the past, when we go in imagination and imagine a different outcome to something that had happened, we in effect alter the trajectory going forward. We change that bridge of incidents going forward. And this is where revision becomes so incredibly important, you guys. Because when it comes to the core beliefs that we carry, the foundational beliefs that we carry, the ones at the deepest levels of consciousness, these are the beliefs that we can aim to change through revision. Because all of our beliefs, everything that we believe and assume today, were all formed in our earlier years, namely in childhood and early adulthood and adolescence. Through your experiences and through what you witnessed in the events, the circumstances, what you were taught, all of these things played a critical role in shaping the concept of self that you are carrying and that you identify with today. And this concept of self, especially at the core belief level, I'm talking our foundational beliefs here, can be a son of a bitch to try to change especially for any of those beliefs that do not serve us. And let me give you guys an example as to what revision can do and the power that it has. Let's say that when you were a kid, you had a stutter or some kind of speech impediment. And let's say that kids were really mean to you because kids can be kind of jerks sometimes. Maybe you were made fun of a lot. And maybe the experience that you had as a child was one of very low self-esteem as a result. Maybe you form the concept that kids are mean, people are harsh, that I can't speak well, that I'm not good at talking to people, and that it's best that I don't talk to people because I'm just going to get weird looks and people making fun of me. And this in and of itself can stunt our psychological development, especially when it comes to the relationships that we form with other people. And because the past always keeps up with us, even though through, say, speech therapy and other means, you were able to get over that stutter, maybe you don't have it anymore, you may still carry some of those core beliefs and assumptions that were formed in that time. And maybe to this day, you struggle when it comes to relationships with others, whether it's friends, family, spouse, whoever. Because from that experience, there was a belief that was formed that people are cruel and that it's best not to even try to talk to people because they're just gonna get mean, they're gonna make you feel bad, and we want to ultimately avoid any pain that that causes. Well, even though at a conscious level, you know that you no longer have that speech impediment, you know that you no longer have that stutter. At a subconscious level, you may still be very guarded as a result. You may still have very difficult times with communication as a result. And this is just one example of many 
in how much the past affects us, even up to and including this moment right now. And if there are any areas in our life that we notice these negative patterns forming, we can guarantee that there is a core belief at the root of these events and at the root of these patterns. But let's say that we imagined that we didn't have that speech impediment. Say that we took what we know now and that imagination creates your reality. What if we took an imaginal act that we never had that issue in the first place, that we never had a stutter or any kind of speech impairment? Imagine how radically different that your life would be today. Imagine how much better the self-esteem would be. Imagine how much better your relationships with others would be. How much better you'd be able to communicate with other people. This is where the power of revision comes in. In a nutshell, the act of revision is taking something that had happened in the past, specifically an undesirable event, and instead imagining the desirable outcome instead. And we can use this for anything. And we should use this for literally anything that shows up that's unwanted. Okay, so we understand what revision does. How do we do it then? How do we apply revision? As I've touched on in previous videos, there are three main ways that we can apply revision. The first is revising long-term events from the past. The second is revising the day when we're getting ready to go to sleep. So where we're going back and revising the last 24 hours. And the third being revision on the spot. So in that moment or shortly thereafter, the event occurred. And one thing that I do recommend for everyone, if you haven't yet, is to revise the long-term events of the past. This should not be overlooked because again, when it comes to our core beliefs and assumptions, when it comes to the foundational beliefs that we carry, a lot of that was formed when we were much younger. I'm talking young adulthood, adolescent, or childhood. There was so much that had happened in that time when we were those little sponges just gathering information and gathering data to form the concept of self that we identify with today. If there were things that happened in that period of time, especially that may have been traumatic or that didn't serve you in your best interest, then we want to go back and we want to revise it. So when it comes to applying revision, when we're going over the long-term past events, I find that this process is nearly identical to imagining in the state akin to sleep. The only difference being is that instead of imagining an event from the future, we are revising an event from the past. We're revising the memory instead. But the same kind of steps apply. So you'd want to get yourself in a nice, relaxed position. You want to get yourself comfortable. Not too comfortable, so that you just wind up falling asleep. But you want to try to get yourself as relaxed as possible. Once you are relaxed, once you have gone into that state akin to sleep or that twilight groggy stage in between wakefulness and complete unconsciousness, that is where you want to bring up the new memory. Note, I said the new memory. And you want to play that out in imagination the same way that you would have seen it or wanted to have it play out instead. One common question that I get asked is do we have to keep that memory short? Do we have to keep it a couple seconds long? Just like we're suggested to do in SATs. And personally I would say it's not required because we may have a bit of a longer memory and if it's something that we recall, if it's something that we have an easier time conjuring up, then we are likely to have a better ability to keep our focus on the revised act. So I wouldn't be too concerned as far as a time limit <laughs> on the memory that you are imagining. It is ultimately whatever feels the most natural. So if that is a five second memory, fantastic. If that is a memory that's a minute long, great. But the key is to try to recall that new revised memory with as much detail as you can muster. And you just want to do this maybe a couple of times 
until you either fall asleep or until you get that feeling of satisfaction. Another common question that I get is how many times do we have to revise the same memory? And ultimately that is going to depend. It's going to depend on the event itself and it's going to depend on the kind of attachment that you have had to it. It's going to depend on how we react. So if we're talking about revising circumstance that was traumatic, if we're talking about revising circumstance that has maybe been haunting us, maybe it's one of those terrible memories that just keep popping up and we can't get it to stop. Revising those may take a little bit more attention to the new revised memory instead. But the way to tell if you have impressed that new memory is you're going to start having that new revised memory come up instead of the old one. So if you notice in your day to day after revising an event, revising a memory, if you notice that the old story is still coming up and it's still coming up strong, that is an indication that we need to go back and keep revising it. We need to keep erasing that memory from our consciousness. And what's going to happen, what's going to start to happen is that old memory is going to get foggy. It's going to get disjointed. It's going to become harder to recall. You might remember that something happened, but it's going to feel very fuzzy. And you're going to notice that when the event pops up in your mind, when you recall the memory of the thing that happened, it's going to be of the new memory. It's going to be of the revised memory instead. That is ultimately how you know that that revised act has taken root. So if you're noticing that the old story is still coming up, it's still popping up in your mind in your day to day, that is the clearest indication that's going to tell you that you need to go back and keep revising it. But if instead it's the new memory that comes up when you recall, that is how you know that that has taken root. And speaking of the old story, there's a common misconception about revision that is important to clear up, specifically traumatic events or events that may be very painful to even think about. It is really, really important to note that when we revise an old memory, we don't want to bring in the old memory first. A lot of times people think that they have to replay the old story and then cycle through the new memory. If this is something that you might be doing, I implore you to stop doing this. <laughs> we don't want to take any aspects of that old memory with us. We do not want to impress any of the old events that may have transpired. When we are revising, we are only bringing in the new desired outcomes. We are only bringing into the fold whatever it is that we would have rather have had happen. Not that we have to play through the old memory first. And this is really, really important because I noticed a lot of people are doing this. And I think that this is contributing to a lot of the apprehension that I see when it comes to revision. Because naturally, there may be some things that we don't want to revisit. <laughs> there may be things that are too painful and we just don't want to go there. And that is completely understandable. But know that when it comes to this, we're not bringing up the old story at all. We do not want to recall that old memory. Now, if the old memory does happen to accidentally pop up while you are revising, just take a moment, breathe. If you need to, let yourself relax first. If you get anxious, it's okay. Let yourself come back down and then just try to incorporate that new memory again. Another common question that I get when it comes to revision is what do we do if there may have been something that happened over the long term? Maybe we can't boil an event down to one specific thing that happened. Say for example, if you were in a toxic relationship for a couple of years, and maybe there were many instances that we prefer to forget, or maybe there are many instances that we need to revise. It could feel overwhelming and extremely daunting to think that we have dozens, if not hundreds of events to revise. 
Also, there may be times where we don't recall the exact event, or maybe we don't recall that turning point that left that lasting impression on us. So how do we know in these cases what to revise? If we're talking about periods of our life that lasted months, if not years, if this is the case for you, instead of trying to go back and revising hundreds of events, which is what I did, <laughs> by the way, I want you to instead to go back as far back as you can with whatever the event was that you want to revise and instead of taking a bunch of things instead of revising a bunch of the old events we can create a new memory instead we can create a new memory that implies that none of the old events transpired none of the old circumstances were ever a thing that came to fruition and I can give you guys a personal example on this one. Now for those of you who may have been watching my channel for a while, you may have heard me talk a little bit about my old story and a little bit about the backstory that I had. But for anyone who may be new and who might not know, I had a pretty difficult childhood, to put it lightly. When I was first introduced to revision, when I first set out to revise some of the courses of events of my life, I didn't even know where to begin. I became overwhelmed very quickly and I was able to through organization and really giving it some time to meditate on what needed to be changed and being the observer of the past events of my life I did in fact revise literally hundreds of events but one thing that I struggled with was how to revise our wealth status my family's wealth status when we were growing up because I grew up very poor. <laughs> My family did not have money. We struggled. To give you guys an idea, when I was born, I spent the first three days of my life in a makeshift crib out of a drawer, a dresser drawer. My parents had to make shift a crib for me because they literally could not afford their own crib. And it wasn't until my grandma came to visit and bought them <laughs> a crib for me. But before that, I literally slept in a dresser drawer. So needless to say, there was not a good relationship when it came to money. And that was generational. My parents struggled. They fought. They worked themselves to death. They worked so hard trying to make ends meet. And it seemed like no matter what they did, no matter how hard they worked, it was always a struggle. And so and I was stumped. I was trying to figure out, well, how on earth am I going to be able to revise this? I mean, this was going as far back before I could even remember. So I really sat and meditated on this. And what came to me was that I needed to create a new story. I needed to completely change that narrative and instead create something that would imply that I had grown up in abundance instead of poverty and lack. So I outlined my new memory. In that memory, I recalled walking up my driveway as I was coming home from school. And I had to have been maybe six or seven years old in this new memory. I could feel the backpack on my shoulders. And I remember looking down in that memory and seeing that I had a uniform on, which would imply that I was in private school. I then looked back up and I noticed our house. And it was this beautiful house, this beautiful old style house with beautiful architecture. I also noted two cars in the driveway. And one of those cars being my dad's Porsche. Growing up, I remember my dad talking wishfully about wanting to get a Porsche. So I imagined that car in our driveway, strictly implying that that was his car. And as I got closer to the house, the front door had opened and my mom stepped out and I saw my mother wearing nice clothes, well kept, and she was just radiant. She looked beautiful in this memory because growing up, I always recalled her being very tired, very short, exhausted. She was burnt out. So I saw her as radiant. I saw her as glowing. So she steps out to start walking towards me and behind her is my dad. And my dad is dressed in a nice suit. 
like he had just got off work from a business meeting. Growing up, my dad was a courier. I have never <laughs> seen my dad wearing a suit, but in my imagination, he looked well kept like he had just gotten home from his office job. He followed behind my mother as she started to walk up to me. And as I got closer, she reached out and just wrapped me in a huge embrace. And then my dad came up behind her and wrapped his arm around us as well. So all three of us were there in that embrace. And I just remember the feeling of love. I remember feeling that love, that adoration, that they were happy to see me. I felt complete. I felt in that moment that everything was okay. And I just had this immense gratitude come over me. I was so grateful for my parents who were loving and who were supportive in this state, in this imaginal act, in this memory. They were the version of themselves that they always wanted to be. They had always wished to be. I saw them as their best self. All the things that they talked about with regret, how they wished they could have done this and how they wished they could have gone back and done their life over again, I imagined the very best version of my parents. And in that moment, in that embrace, my world was complete. This new memory in and of itself radically changed not only my relationship with money, but my entire family. So this is an example of how we can create the new story. If there were aspects of your life, if there were greater aspects that can't be boiled down to a single event, you can instead create a whole new assumption. You can create a whole new imaginal act because that state is just as solidly real as the one that you might recall now. And I know that at times, especially if you are new to this concept and you're new to the world of Neville Goddard, I understand completely that this can seem daunting. There may be things that we do not want to revisit when it comes to our past. We may want to keep some things completely locked and buried away, never to have them resurface again. And I understand that. But the problem is that the past never stays buried. The past never stays in the past. The past is fluid, just like everything else. And it is always moving forward. It is always advancing. It is always advancing forward to confront us in the future. So if there are patterns in your life that need to change, if there are events that come up that are unwanted and that trigger us and that cause a reaction, an unpleasant reaction, the first cause of action is always to revise. Through changing the events of the past, you will find that key that sets you free. To revise is to repent. To revise is to forgive. To revise is to free yourself. Revise daily. Revise anytime something comes up that's unwanted. Anything that you hear, see, taste, touch, anything that is not what you desire. The first step is always to change it. And once you do this, once we no longer keep ourselves in that perpetual loop, once we finally break ourselves away from the limiting beliefs and assumptions and constructs that we have been hanging on to, that is how you set yourself free. And that is how you manifest anything that you want. So I hope you guys found today's video helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in checking out any of my other resources, I will have my links down below to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my blog, my social channels, my courses and workshops, all of those goodies. I have them down in the description box below. So do not forget to check them out. Also do not forget to check out these videos over here. Each video is a different topic, but they all talk about how to manifest the best life possible. So until we meet again, you guys, take care, be well, and never forget that the first step is to always revise. This is the key that will set you free. Happy manifesting, guys.